Hi, I'm Andy from Bible Movies, and today we are going to talk about a quick to make tote bag that makes a great gift for anybody. So, if you want to make a gift for somebody this weekend, the name of this bag is the Two Hour Tulip Purse. So when I first looked at this pattern, I was like, two hours? Yeah, right. And then I made one. I made this one right here. It took me two hours. Really was easier than it looks. Because the way that, so this is my friend Janice's pattern. She writes the, all of the patterns for anything but boring. And she makes some really cute patterns. This particular project is the tulip bag. The pattern makes four different sizes. This is the large size. There's also a jumbo size, and then a small size, and then a petite size. So I'm gonna show you the cutting out part on the petite size of the bag, and then I'm gonna show you the sewing part on the small size of the bag. This is the large size, and then I will also make the jumbo size. Part of the reason that I'm making all four bags is because I'm using different combinations of stabilizers in each bag, so you can kind of get an idea of what you like. So this bag, this large size one, I have made this with um, Deco Fuse as the stabilizer in part of the bag. It's a fusible, non-woven, mid-weight, mid to heavyweight interfacing. And then for the bag itself, I used wool batting. So it's not fusible, it's not fused on. I just attached it to the, to the um, different pieces. I used two different fabrics by Anna Maria Horner. So it's a really fun little combination. One of the things you can do with this pattern is you can add pockets. So I have a small pocket and a large pocket. You can put a pocket on the back. You can put a pocket on the side. You can put a pocket on both sides if you choose to. I wanted to see what it would look like with a side pocket, so I made a side pocket. I think if the next time I do this, I will probably put pockets on both sides. So the mediums, the small bag that we're gonna make, I'm gonna show you in a minute, I'm probably gonna put pockets on both sides. You can just put the pocket in the back. You can just put the pocket on the front if you want to. The reason I probably wouldn't put the pocket just on the front is because your magnetic snap is here and on the pocket, then you're gonna have more pulling on the pocket. The other feature that this bag has is the smaller bags have two different shapes of closures on them. So you can either make a pointy closure or you can make a curved pedal closure. You can also leave the closure off altogether and close it with a, um, with a big button and a piece of elastic. Another idea that Janice gives you in the pattern is you do it without the closure at all and then you can make, if you made this with orange fabric, orange and black fabric say, you could make a jack-o'-lantern. You could embroider the little face on the front and you could make it a trick-or-treat bag. You could add, um, um, you could do this out of spring colored fabric and you could make it like an Easter basket you could make it like any kind of basket you want. All right, so we're gonna we're not gonna do all of the different adjustments, but we are gonna make this bag, and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on it, okay? So we're gonna put this bag away. The first thing I want, the first tips I wanna give you is the cutting, the setup for the cutting. So I am in this bag going to use heat and stay fusible fleece. This is my favorite fusible iron-on fleece uh, material. It's a polyester batting that has a fusible, um, um, a fusible topping on it. I like the weight of this. It fuses really cleanly. It doesn't pucker up like some other kinds do. This is my favorite. So we're gonna use fusible fleece, and then we're also gonna use a product that is new to me. A customer asked me if I carry it. I had never heard of it before. I got a bolt in. I've been playing with it all day. I love it. So what this is, is a fusible, a fusible horse hair interfacing. So it actually has horse hair in it. One side's bumpy, that's my fusible side. The other side's not. What this reminds me of is like um, ShapeFlex. So it's like a woven fusible interfacing, but heavier. So if you like ShapeFlex, and I really like a woven stable, or woven interfacing because it keeps the feel of the fabric I'm putting it on. So this is kind of what that is, only it's just a little bit beefier, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is you have four different sizes of your petal. This is why it's called the tulip bag, because it looks like a flower petal. I want to make four different sides of my bag with this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out my lining side of my bag. I need four petals. 
So what I did was I folded this in half. I have my piece of interfacing. I folded it in half. And then I fold it in half again, so I only have to trace out my pattern one time. All right, so as long as that fits on there, you're good to go. Now I also wanna add a pocket to this, so instead of tracing this out again, I'm gonna cut through my interfacing so that I only have one layer here. Then I'm going to fold this piece over again. So now I have five layers of fusible interfacing here. Just so that it doesn't slip too much on me, I'm just gonna pin it a couple of times out of the way of where I'm gonna cut. Okay, so we're just gonna hold this down. I'm gonna take my pattern piece and set it right on top here. Now, this part is subject to interpretation, you do what you like. When I'm tracing out a pattern that I know I'm gonna cut on the line and I know that there's going to be um, uh, a seam allowance, especially on something that's kind of bulky. I like a fine tipped permanent marker because I can just sort of run that right next to the pattern paper. Now that being said, if I knew for sure, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to make this pattern multiple times, I would make myself a piece of template plastic with this design on it because it's sturdy. I don't have to worry about um, cutting into it or marking on it too much. And it's easier for my pen to run next to the bit of plastic. But for the sake of demonstration, we're just going to draw this out. All right. So now I have five layers here. Anytime I can use my rotary cutter, I'm going to. So I'm going to use my Kai scissors and I'm going to trim this piece off. Now this is going to cut through all five of my layers. Okay. Then I can use my rotary cutter and my ruler to straight cut this piece. Anytime I know I have a straight thing to cut, I'm going to cut it with my ruler. Just because it saves time, it's more accurate. Okay, so go ahead and cut that the, that way and get rid of your scripts. So now what I've got is all five layers here. I took my pin out too soon. So I'm actually gonna pin through all of the layers here. And even though this stuff is heavier than the other like shape flex, it really does cut really easy. All right, so the first thing I need to do is cut out my interfacings. Then I can decide which closure I want for this one. My closure, I need to fold in half and cut on the fold. Now this stuff is pretty stiff, so I'm gonna wanna do a couple of things. I'm gonna wanna kind of finger press this and pin it down so that I can find that fold and it doesn't walk away from me. So since I folded this here, I'm gonna use my template to cut out, this is for our little um, flat closure. I'm just gonna set this on top of there. I'm just gonna hold it, because it's not that much of a design to cut. And we only have to do it on the fold, so we only have to draw out half of it. Okay, now the pattern will tell you which things you need to cut your interfacings for and which things you need to cut your um, fusible fleece for. Now in one of these bags, I used some um, foam. In another bag, I used another kind of fusible fleece and different interfacings. All right, so now we've got our flap made. Once I've cut out all of my interfacings, I'm gonna take my pattern piece again. We can get rid of these scraps. I'm gonna take my pattern piece and my fabric. So here's the fabrics that we're going to use for this bag. This is gonna be the outside of my bag. This is a beautiful um, um, Odile Ballou fabric and then some Cori Dantini fabric on the inside. So since I'm going to make multiple layers again, what I'm gonna do is put my folded sides together. 
I need to have four pieces of both the outside fabric and the lining fabric. So again, I can just take my fabric. I'm gonna give this a quick press. Hang on one second. So since I need to cut four layers out, now I've got this all pressed, it's nice and smooth. I've already got two layers here because they're back to, or they're folded wrong sides together. If I just fold this over again, now I have all eight layers set in one spot. Now, if you're nervous about cutting through eight layers, don't do this. If you feel like you can handle it, then go ahead, okay? Going to then again trace around my fabric. Now I know I'm putting Sharpie on a piece of fabric, but you're gonna cut right on that line and you have a seam allowance in this bag. So you're not gonna see this and you're only marking one of the fabrics because you're gonna cut through all the layers at once. Okay, so now we've got four and four layers. I can use my rotary cutter and my ruler again to cut the top of our pattern. Just ditch all of that. Then I'm gonna cut these out. All right, so now we are going to use the pink as your lining. So we're going to separate these and the floral print as the outside of our bag. So I'm going to make two piles. One pile, the lining pile, is going to get this stuff fused to it. The outside bag, though, is going to get fusible, the, um, the heat and stay attached to it. So we still have to cut a couple more things. We're gonna make two pockets on this bag. So that means I need um, an extra bit cut out of this part. So first, I'm going to cut my closure, my bag closure. I only need one color. So since this is my lining fabric and this is my outside fabric, I'm gonna cut my closure from this little piece here Okay, so again, I'm gonna put this on the fold because I need two pieces. They need to be back to back. I'm just gonna cut this off of here. And since we have them layered and we have them folded, we'll get both of these at the same time. Okay. Okay, now put that to the side. We are also gonna cut our pockets. So you can make pockets alternate. You can, you can do it however you like to do it. We're also gonna cut handles. So since this is the outside of my bag, I'm gonna make my handles my lining fabric. And you'll see that there's very little waste here. So the pattern tells me what size of my handles I need to cut. I'm going to add that to my scrap bin. And I'm going to cut my handles now. I need two pieces of fabric for my handles. So while these are piled up like this, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them both off and put those aside for now. Then I can take this piece of fabric because these are still doubled up and I can cut one or two pockets from this. So let's see if we can get both pockets from this. So I've made two layers here and two layers there. If I wanna make two pockets, I have to have two of each color. 
Now for my pocket, I'm not going to use this part above this dotted line. So I'm just going to fold it over. I'm not going to cut it off because you still need that later. I'm just going to fold it over. And now I can get both of those out of this extra bit of fabric. Like I said, very little waste in this pattern, which is pretty groovy. So now I can put a pocket on either side of my bag because I have enough fabric that I can make two pockets. Okay, so I'm going to cut those out. The small bags have one extra pocket on the inside. The bigger bags have the option for two pockets on the inside. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to get to my pocket, my inside pockets in a second. So for my inside pocket, so that's all the waste that I have from the lining piece of fabric. It's not too bad. And then for the inside pocket, I need two pieces of fabric. The patterns are a little, the pattern calls for a little bit different size depending on what size bag you're going to make. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the size I need for the inside of my bag. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to cut a um, interface, interfacing for my pocket, so I'll go back and do that. Okay, so there's my pocket. So now I've cut all my pieces out for my inside pocket, my two outside pockets, my lining, my bags, my bag sides, and my handles. So now the only thing that's left to cut is the fluffier stabilizer. So whether you're using foam or you're using fleece like I'm using, we're gonna do that now too. So I need four pieces of fleece. So I've got my strip of fleece here. Now I know that I'm gonna need, I know that I'm gonna need a strip for my handles. So I'm gonna fold my fat, I'm gonna fold my fleece so that I have four layers here. We're going to take our bag pattern, unfold it, and we're going to put it far enough over here that I still have a strip on this side that I can get my fleece piece for my handles. Trace this out again. So you end up tracing the pattern multiple times, which is why having template plastic would be easier. But I wanted to show you with the actual pattern. does get a little clicky on the fleece, but that's okay. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to rough cut this so that I know that I have my piece of fleece that I need for my handles. Cut my top off. And then if you are comfortable enough to use your rotary cutter to cut freehand like this, you can. Um, I'm kind of clumsy and so this makes me nervous. I don't do it very often. If I am going to do it, I'm probably going to do it with batting because batting is kind of fluffy and gets out of the way. But I did want to show that you can use your rotary cutter to cut your shapes out too if you choose to. I tend to be a scissor kind of girl. Alright, so now we have all of our pieces. Okay, We're also going to cut what we need for our strap handles. And that's it. Okay, so now we have, I wanted to show you how you cut everything. Now we're gonna talk about fusing and we're gonna start sewing this puppy together. All right, so the pattern will tell you which places you put which fusibles on. Basically, you're gonna put the, um, the fusible interfacing on your lining pieces. So for this bag, this is my lining piece. And this is the outside of my bag. How cute is this bag gonna be? So a couple of tips when you're working with this stuff. I really dig how easy this stuff fuses on. 
Now I do have my iron turned all the way up and hot tip, if it's not fusing right away, turn your steam on. If you steam iron this, it fuses in one pass. See that? It's completely stuck on there. All right, so that is for the fusible um, interfacing. So here is one of my lining pieces that's been interfaced by the magic of television. Here's the other three. So these have all been fused. These are my lining pieces. Set those to the side. Now we are also going to line our the lining of our pocket piece. Doesn't matter which side really. Um, our tab, our um, closer closure tab, and our pocket. All right. So all of these things have been fused. You'll notice that I have these laid together because we're going to sew these first. So I've got these right sides together. This is my pocket, this is my closure tab, this is my inside pocket. We're gonna put all those aside. Then we're also going to take our outside pieces with our fusible fleece. So when you feel the fusible fleece, you can feel that one side is obviously bumpier than the other side. One side's really silky, one side's really bumpy. So make sure that the bumpy side is going on the back side of your, um, your outside fabric. Turn your steam off for this step and then fuse it from the fabric side, not the batting side. All right, now you can steam this. I don't usually steam it though until after if I'm gonna do any quilting on a project, but you can see that that is stuck on there, okay? So now I have um, all four pieces of the outside of my bag has already been fused. Now this stuff does creep a little bit. So if you need to take a pair of scissors and give it a little haircut, to get rid of any part of your batting that's hanging over your fabric, go ahead and do that because that's just going to keep your seams cleaner. And since this stuff is kind of fluffy polyester, it does creep a little bit when you iron it. It's not that big a deal though. So just give her a little haircut and she's ready to go. We're going to put these pieces to the side. Then we're going to take our handle pieces and we're going to center our fusible fleece in the middle of our handle. All right. Once that's done, I'm just gonna take my fabric and fold it over the edge of my fleece and give it a good press. Okay. If you find that your fabric isn't creasing as nice as you would like, hit it with a little bit of flatter, then turn it over and then press it and you'll get a much crisper edge to your fold. Plus it smells nice. All right, so once you've got your two edges folded over, then fold that in half. And now is when you could hit it with steam, but you don't want the full steam on because if you hit it with too much steam, that fleece inside will kind of shrink up a little bit and you don't want that. But you do want all of these layers of fabric to fold in half and give you kind of a crisp edge, okay? So once you've made both of your handles like this, we're gonna put those to the side. Now, the next thing that you need to pay attention to is you need to get your pen and your pattern piece. And you wanna give yourself a reference mark of where you're gonna stop sewing. This part's important to get that nice little shape on the bottom. Well, how do you do that? Here's your, here's your stop sewing sign right here. That little, that little thing right there. All right, so what I did with mine was I took my pieces. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna put things right sides together. Oh, this is the wrong size, hang on. Since I'm making two different size bags, I got discombobulated. I'm gonna take my pin and I'm gonna make a little hole here for where that goes. Okay, then I can take my Sharpie and I can kind of just stick it through the hole. And so now I have a little dot. So on every one of your pieces, both your lining piece and your bag pieces, you're gonna just sort of make a little dot of where to stop sewing. Okay. 
Okay, so here's all my outside pieces. You're also gonna mark your pocket piece. One of them. Well, no, you're not. I take that back because that's not gonna be that direction. You're gonna mark all your lining pieces. Stack's getting too fluffy. Now, if you're doing this with template plastic, again, if you know you want to make this bag a bunch of times, I would strongly recommend doing this with template plastic because your plastic isn't going to wear out all the different times you mark this little hole in there. Okay? So we're going to put those to the side. Then the next thing that we need to mark is where we're going to put our snap in. So I love these magnets from Sassafras Lane because they're all kinds of really fun, cute colors. So you can get these in colors that match your bag. You can get them in like a bronze or a silver or a black or iridescent or whatever. But since we have a lot of this sort of orangey fabric on here, I chose um, these mustard yellow orange snaps. This is how you're going to put those snaps in. I did my interfacing on the back of my outside bag fabric on purpose. Because I want this to be on the top, that means I want my snap to be set on the inside. So when you take the snap out of the package, you're going to have these little things that look like nickels with holes in them. And then you're going to pull these apart because you have a male and a female end of your snap. Take this little rubber thing off. That's just the thing that keeps your paint from chipping off or whatever in, in transport. So take this off. You're going to put the female end of your snap on the bag body. So don't do that one yet. We're going to put the male end of our snap on the, the flap. So we're going to use our template, which is, was folded in half, and I'm going to line it up on half of that design, and then the middle of the snap, there's my mark right there. This is where that wants to live, okay? Then I'm going to take this little nickel, there's the circle of where the middle of that's going to go. We're going to line that up, and I'm just going to make a line in those two lines, all right? I'm going to take one of these outside panels, doesn't matter which one, unless you fussy cut your fabric, it doesn't matter which one. And we're going to lay this right side up. Then I'm going to take my template and I'm going to remember what I'm doing. Is it? I didn't pause it. You didn't? <laughs> well, I guess we're editing this one. Okay. Since this bag is smaller, I'm going to show you my big bag. So my big bag has the button down towards the bottom because the bag's so big and the, the flap comes all the way down to here. Since this one's not very big, our snap placement's gonna be way up here, okay? So again, just like we did with the marking the bottom, I'm gonna take my pin and put it through that hole and then use my Sharpie to make a little dot through the hole. So you can see your little dot. Then you're gonna take your nickel and you're gonna do the same thing you did with the other part, line up the hole, make these two little lines, okay? Now we need to cut through this. And to do that, we're gonna go over to the cutting mat because I don't wanna cut into my pressing surface. And we are going to show you a tip on that. So this is my slice tool. It's a ceramic bladed knife that you can't cut yourself with, which is super nice, but it cuts brilliantly through fabric. They don't look like this anymore. Now they look like this, but the reason this is cool is, you know how many times I've lost the top to this? This one is like a clicky pen, so you can't lose the lid, okay? So if you want one of these, they don't look like this anymore, they look like this. But I'm gonna take my 
ceramic tip pen and I'm just gonna cut on those lines I made. Now you do have to push kind of hard because you're cutting through fabric and um, the fusible fleece, but it cuts like butter. So we're just gonna cut those two lines and these two lines where we gave ourselves our reference points, okay? So if we put the male end or the female end on the outside of our bag, I'm gonna slide it through those two holes that I cut and put my little disc on the back. And then you're gonna spread these out like brads. Just smush them down. And do the same thing with the female or with the male end, but you're gonna put it from the fabric side because you want this on the outside. So where's our little slits? There they are. I need to make my slits bigger or deeper. So there we go. Those pop in really nicely. And since we've already put interfacing on the back of this, we don't have to do any extra interfacing. All right, so now we're all set up and we're ready to sew. All right, so now we're ready to sew. I'm gonna use my quarter inch piecing foot because I love her so much. And we're gonna take all of our, both our pocket, our outside pocket and our inside pocket, and we're gonna do just a little bit of sewing. So I'm just gonna sew the top of my pocket shut, just along that straight line. And then my square inside pocket, I'm gonna sew up, this is a square, so it doesn't matter which side you start on. I'm going to sew three sides. Right. Now, for the pocket, we're going to turn that right way out. For the outside pocket, we're gonna flip this around and I'm gonna show you some tips on getting this pressed really flat. But first, we're gonna take our little outside flap and we're just, with a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna sew all the way around that outside bit. So I'm gonna go grab my point turner and we're gonna do some pressing and I'm gonna show you some fun stuff. All right, so now we have our square pocket. I'm going to trim away the points just a little bit. Don't get too crazy because you don't want those seams to come apart. I'm just gonna do those top two. And I'm gonna turn my pocket right way out. Y'all know I love my precision turning tool because I can get right up inside that pocket and really poke those corners out. And it's not only about poking the corners out, but I can also, once the corners are poked out, I can take that brown tip there and I can run it down the seam and it almost does the pressing for you. And when you have interfacing in something, sometimes it's really hard to get the seam lined out on the sides before you press it. So if I run that point turner along my seam, it's easier to press. So now that I've got that pretty flush, I'm gonna lay it flat and run my, my turner down the seam again. Then I'm gonna press this nice and flat. And I am using my steam at this point because I really want this to lay as crisp as possible. All right, so we're gonna put our pocket to the side when you're pressing something like this and you know you wanna fold it over and then press it flat, if you just iron it, you're gonna end up with a, with a fold there. But if you take the, 
item and you press it with the seam open first, just go straight down your seam. Then you fold it right sides together. Since this already doesn't have any play in it, you have a perfectly top, um, flat top seam. So press your seam open and then press it flat. Okay, so now we have our outside pocket ready. We've got one pocket here, we've got an inside pocket here, and then we have our flap. We're gonna do the same thing with our flap. And since this is curved, I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. Don't make the seam allowance too small, just to get rid of some of the fullness. And if you cut away some of the fullness, you shouldn't have to um, cut into the seam allowance to turn this. So now if I get down in here and turn this right way out, even though it's a curve, especially if it's a curve, your precision turning tool is going to make this so much easier again. So just like we did with our outside, our inside pocket, I'm going to take my turning tool, I'm going to go to the middle, and I'm just going to press that out all the way around that curve. So now even though you have a curved seam on the inside, and you have a pretty heavy duty interfacing, and you have a magnet in there, that turning tool is going to press everything out for you really nicely. And then now if we come over it and press it, everything's going to lay really crisp like. Okay, now you can go back and top stitch this if you choose to. You could do a decorative stitch around the top of that. I do want to do a top stitch on the top of here, and I'm also going to top stitch along the top of my pocket. And that just makes it look a little bit cleaner. And when we get the pocket put into the bag, you're going to see why that matters. All right, so I'm going to top stitch this, and then I'm going to show you how to start putting the bag together. So now I've top stitched my flap. I've top stitched my outside pocket, I've top stitched my inside pocket, and I top stitched my bag handles. All right, so now we're gonna figure out the placement for our inside pocket. I'm gonna take one of my lining pieces, and here's your template for the bag pocket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this along that line right here. Then when I flip this over, I can either like with a friction pen or something, make a line right here, or I can just take my pocket and I can line this up so that my pocket lines up with those lines, okay? Then I'm gonna pin my pocket down because we're gonna sew this down and then we're gonna flip our pocket over, all right? Now, personally, I'm gonna flip this over now that I'm thinking about it. So my bag lining, now I have this pretty piece on the inside, all right? So I'm gonna line my pocket up here I'm gonna put a pin in it real quick. And then with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna stitch this down. So I stitched my pocket on right there. Then I'm gonna flip my pocket up. And you can just kind of, if you need to iron this, you can, but you can just sort of press that up like that and then repin it. Now the reason I top stitched my pocket was because you can't do this after the fact. I'm going to snip off that little bit of thread there so it looks neat. Then I'm just going to stitch down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side. This is going to secure our pocket into the inside of our bag. Make sure you back stitch the top ends because that's going to let it let you put things in your pocket without destroying your bag. So we're just going to stitch really close to the edge on both sides and the bottom. And then back stitch. All right, so there's our pocket. Now we're gonna show you how to sew your lining and the outside of your bag together. All right, so now what you have is four outside pieces. One has a magnet. When you put these together, you're gonna to take two of these now, okay? So let's say this is the front 
and this is the back. When we take the front, if we take our template here and we line this up, it'll tell us where our straps are supposed to go. So we can take our straps and on the right side of our fabric, put our strap into place here. Okay, so there's one. Don't curve your handle. There's the second one, right? Then we're gonna take our, this is the front of our bag. Okay, so we're gonna take this away. Then we're gonna put our other handles on the other side. So we take our strap, attach it to there. Oops, I missed it. Here's our second one, pin it into place. Now the other thing we need to do is we need to put this so that when we have our bag on, it will flip that way. All right, so we're gonna put these Wrong side, we're gonna put the, this is the right side, this is the wrong side in this case, and we're gonna put that right in the middle here. So that this is the back of our bag, this one is the front of our bag, right? So when they go together, they're gonna to go like that. We're gonna, we're just gonna do a little stay stitching here to hold these in so we can take all the pins out before we start sewing our bag together. So we have the back of our bag, the front of our bag, and the two sides of our bag. So I wanna put this pocket on the back. Now we need to mark our little stop sewing, our little stop sewing sign. Since we're gonna add this pocket to the back of our bag, we need to tell ourselves where we're gonna stop sewing. So we're gonna use our little dot method here. Now we know where that is. I'm gonna line the bottom, the bottom of this pocket tulip up with the bottom of my bag, like that. And I'm just gonna put a couple pins in to hold this in place. Now, this is truly the hardest part of this bag and it ain't that hard. We have the front, a side, the back, and a side. So I'm gonna sew this side to this piece and this side to this piece. Make sure your handles are tucked down in so you don't mess them up anywhere. And it seems like it might be difficult to sew around this curve. It really isn't. I don't even pin around it. Okay, so I'm gonna put one pin in there just to hold it together and we're gonna sew and I'm gonna show you how to get to that start stop point. All right. So we've got our bags, our bag pieces right sides together. I definitely want to back stitch every time I join a bag piece together. Don't skip that step because as we start turning this inside out, those pieces get pulled on. And we're just gonna sew around that curve. I know when we hear the word curve piecing, we get a little weird, but this is such a smooth slope that it doesn't really matter. All right, so now make sure that your points all line up at the bottom. and then you're gonna stop sewing at that little dot. I drop my needle right on the dot, and then I back up a couple of stitches because I wanna make sure that that's locked in, because that's gonna make the bottom of our bag, okay? So we're gonna sew that side to that one, this side to this one. Make sure you're locking the stitches at the beginning and at the end. So now we just have to take these two half pieces and put them together. So we're gonna put that piece on the side piece. 
make sure that you're sewing a front or a back to a side. It's really kind of hard not to because the shapes are only going to go together one way. It helps if your needle doesn't come unthreaded, but it happens. So now when you get to where you're getting close to the bottom down here, you're going to see that these two seams go together. What I do is I push one to one side and one to the other side because they're kind of full with all that fleece, right? So you want those to lock in so that your bag is very secure in the bottom. And you're just going to kind of sew all the way around that edge. Now I do back stitch at this bottom here just to make sure that it's really secure. Right? Then we're just going to keep on going up the side of the bag. Okay. So now what's happened is we've made the whole outside of our bag. We didn't have to box our bottoms because that boxed the bottom. Turn it right way out. Double check everything before you get ahead of yourself. I'm going to pull the two pins out that held our pocket in. And now our pocket has been sewn into that in the process. We didn't have to do anything extra to add that little pocket in. And I'm just going to push all these seams out with my hands. Okay. So now there's the whole outside of our bag is already done. Before you get ahead of yourself again, double check, make sure that your snap snaps where it's supposed to, and it does. Your pocket works. Everything's kind of ready to go, right? So we're going to do the exact same thing we did there, but with the lining fabrics. We've got one part of the pocket. You can put the pocket on the front or on the back, it doesn't really matter. Since the other three are all the same, just sew them to each other. Okay, so we're going to sew these two together. And again, we're going to back stitch to make sure that that's good and tight. Stop at your dot and back stitch. Oops, I didn't back stitch. And then you're going to put these right sides together. You're doing the same thing you did with the outside. This is the first bag I think I've ever made where putting together the outside of the bag was the easiest part. Again, when you get to the bottom, put your seams one way and the other so that they lock. and backstitch over that seam conjunction. All right. Now all we have left to do is put our bag together. So we're gonna poke this out too. And you have this sort of box, right? Since the outside of our bag is already turned right way out, 
we're gonna make sure that our handles are down. Make sure that your handles aren't sticking up anywhere. Now, if you want your this pocket on the front of your bag, match up the front of your bag with the pocket. Okay, so tuck that in there. And just sort of get the whole bag stuffed inside. All we have to do now is line up our side seams here. And again, I like to face them opposite each other so that there's a little less bulk. And I'm gonna match all four of my seam spaces. And I don't really match all the way around the bag because those, those are sort of like the compass points and they just sort of match up, right? Then once they're kind of pinned together, I'm just going to sort of massage the fabric into the places where everything goes, like that. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the bag. I am going to leave a small bit open right here for turning. Now if you want to, you can leave the turning bit in here to turn it right way out. It's up to you. We're going to top stitch it anyway, so I'm going to leave this straight bit open because I find turning and top stitching a straight part easier than a curved part. You're probably gonna to wanna to pull your arm off your machine so you can get this up underneath there. And then make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and the end. Take your time and kind of massage the fabric into place so that you don't sew any puckers in, if you can help it. Shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad. Oops, that might pucker. There we go. So we're back to the flat side of our bag, so I want to make sure that I'm leaving this open as well. So I'm going to leave about a, I don't know, four inch opening and backstitch. Now, you want to make sure that the side that you're leaving open isn't the handle side. And you may, you can choose to go back and reinforce where your handles are stitched in. You can literally just pop it back in and sew forward and backward over your handles. I always like to reinforce my handles because anytime I've had a bag that's come apart, that's where it comes apart. All right, now, we're gonna take out our pins. And turn our bag. Now, let me shove the lining inside the bag. 
we've got a little Dawn bag. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this over to my iron and I'm gonna roll these seams to the top and I'm gonna iron it. I'm gonna press it before I top stitch it because if you press this fabric before you top stitch it, it's all gonna be flusher at the top and everything's gonna relax. And then you can also iron this over this little bit with the fusible fleece here, you can iron it over before you top stitch it. So make sure that this is all flush in and happy like that before you top stitch it. All right, so that's my last little tip on that is use your iron for all that it's worth. So we're gonna go press this, we're gonna top stitch it, and then we're gonna be done. So I've pressed all my edges under, so now this is nice and flat. So I'm gonna start my top stitching right here so I can make sure that this is all done right. Still got my quarter inch foot on, but I'm only gonna use half of it. So instead of using this edge here, I'm gonna split down the middle of that part of my foot because that lets me do a really close to the top top stitch without, um, changing my foot out, but it still gives me a reference point. So if I go all the way around my bag now, and this is one of those times where you probably wanna take it a little bit slow because you wanna make sure that everything's lined up and that you're getting a nice consistent stitch. You can lengthen your stitch length at this point if you want it to look a little bit more um, quilted, but I really like the stability that top stitching gives you. Your quarter inch foot might get into the way a little bit when you're coming up to these handles, but just stop when you get there. Make sure you're stopping needle down and then it won't matter. You can judge your fabric around all you want and fuss with your bag. The other reason I like to top stitch handles and stuff like that is because it stabilizes and gives you another layer of security on the handles. So our bag's all done. I'm gonna make sure I smush that bottom out. Always got to go around and clip all the threads from everywhere you started and stopped and all that. Just give her a little clean up. And she's all done. So look at you've got what I like about this bag too is that it opens up really big. So if you want to have like a knitting bag that you just carry a ball of yarn or something in, this is a great size. It's going to close up on the top, but you're still going to have this nice big opening on the top of it, right? Um, you can tuck these sides in. I don't usually. You can do it like that if you want to carry it this way. But you can see how this size would be a really cute like little Easter basket or um, makeup pouch, but it opens up really nice and you have a nice big sort of cavernous space that you can put all your things in. All right, so we have made, this is the small size. Let me grab. This is the small size, this is the large size. 
We are also going to make the petite size and the jumbo size. So I'll give you guys pictures of all of those when they're done and ready to go. But I think this is a really fun little project. And then you can make some for your friends and you can make some to just have as little organizer bags. Again, I really like the idea of this as like a knitting bag. Because when you open it up, it's got a nice, nice big opening. So you're not going to drag your threads around or anything. All right. So I hope you dig this project. Again, the pattern is available on our website. It is the two-hour tulip bag. All of the supplies that we use, the fleece and the stabilizer and the tools and the whatever is all available on our website. So um, go make you some. Everybody looks